algorithms used by LAPD rely on reported crime data in low income neighborhoods. There's a clear bias that that is inherited because it can only predict the information that's being uploaded, said Khan. In other words, it's garbage in, garbage out. According to Khan, the reliance on the historical crime data skew police presence towards low income neighborhoods that are already saturated with cops. The way the model works is previous crime data is put on these program computer algorithms that can predict future crime concept. This is low level survival crime. So it's the same neighbors, poor na the same neighborhoods, poor neighborhoods, predominantly non white communities, people of color. In addition, the radicalized aspect of crime prediction con is also distributed by increasing reliance of police on business analytics and algorithms set setting aside the element for profit of profit for private companies that make such software con warns that predictive policing has a potential to invert core principles of justice in essence principles has have been that has been held for the longest time of innocent to proven guilty has now been turned onto his head because we're all good to prove an innocent con said. Thought criminal. Thought criminality 101. That's how I look at it. And this is all this so called, you know, predictive policing. That's all it is. Assume. Kind of, sort of. How effective is it going to be? They use this. In the war zones of Iraq and Afghanistan, now they're bringing it to the streets of the United States of America. Like I said in my past episodes, the war on terror is a conflagration with ourselves. This is just a prime example. As far as I'm concerned, it should, it should be scrapped completely. Kio Bono, who benefits? The military industrial complex, the private prison industry is another good example. CCA, Geo Group, they made little deals with our state governments on throw many, we need to keep these air, our facilities 85 to 90 percent occupied. Okay? Uh, occupancy, excuse me, for their facilities so uh, something to think about and as far as I'm concerned scrap it 1984 no way in hell alright so I'm gonna go to the next article here and this one's pretty interesting this is from the government rag and um, yeah, it came out the 12th by Stephanie Sledge it's entitled the media coverage pleas Bin Laden's son-in-law is quietly on trial over 9-11 attacks. And I do remember James Corbett talked about this as well. It's been very low-key. You know, everyone's mainly focusing on Ukraine. Ukraine, all during the whole Ukraine um, events, you know, which is horrendous. And, um, but they try to put this like under our noses like we don't even know so she has an opinion on this and I will shall read apparently we live in a time where the media would rather cover the Blade Runner Oscar Pistorius trial on CNN instead of the trial of Osama Bin Laden's son-in-law Samuel Mean Abu Gatai Gatai guys I'll pronounce that best I can sorry and his alleged involvement in the 9-11-01 World Trade Center attacks. The following attacks has been an enormous amount of tyrannical legislation and police data strap, agenda strapped upon the America's people's backs, including the creation of Homeland Security and the National Defense Authorization Act, NDAA. All in the name of post-9-11 safety to keep our nation protected from anyone, any from any more so-called bad guys, that want to allegedly attack us. Why would the mainstream media and some of the alternative media want to provide a little no coverage of this trial? Wouldn't this be the greatest opportunity to pick apart any alleged lies that the nation 
may have been told about what really happened that day, why does CNN cover Oscar Pistorius' trial rather than the trial involving the alleged death of over 3,000 people? Do you find something odd about this? I do, just like I did when CNN chose to cover other Hollywood trials instead of the Aurora shooter or even the Boston bombing trial. Above Lower Manhattan in a federal courtroom, the first trial of an alleged high-ranking Al-Qaeda figure has begun related to the September 11th attacks. Samuel Amin Abu Ghath, 48, is accused of conspiracy to kill Americans and faces three related charges of terrorism as the chief group's chief propagandist. These charges are based upon a video that surfaced following the attacks showing Abu Ghath as he crossed his legs next to bin Laden in a cave in Afghanistan. According to AP reports, prosecutors are currently portraying Samuel Abu Ghadath as a member of Osama bin Laden's inner circle, who allegedly had advanced knowledge to the 9-11 terrorist plot. If convicted, Abu Ghadath, excuse I got to pronounce his name right, sorry about that, could face life in prison. On the other side, of, according to a national memo, the defense said the government was counting counting on fear and anger generated by the September 11, 2001 attacks to convict a Muslim husband and father who had some dumb things in the past. Really? Is the nation sleeping? I wonder if the American people are under some sort of spell because of what the government really wants uh, is for everyone in this country to run with the original Al Qaeda story. One of the most bizarre aspects this is called of the trial, besides no real coverage, is Assistant U.S. Attorney Nicholas Lewin, mentioned at least 50 times in a 50, 25 minute opening statement. The words, uh, words Al Qaeda repeatedly and refer to bin Laden over and over again. If journalists and spectators have descended upon his trial as AP reports, then where is live coverage? Are we getting in this courtroom, getting his courtroom drawings and AP reports? Where are the families? Where are the real, where is the real coverage of this trial? Why are Americans not interested in the first ever terrorism trial of the 9-11 attacks. It could be assumed the suppression of the trial obviously control uh, the obvious controlled re released interviews and the lack of real coverage serves a deeper agenda that is hidden from the American people. There are high stakes in the Obama administration as officials to seek to prove and prosecute terrorism cases in civilian courts. Why was Abu Ghaith not, not sent to Guantanamo Bay. As with many questionable crimes, there is an agenda that follows and the Obama administration likes to seek ways to change the rules in the court system and include terrorism in civilian courts. How convenient for the NDAA and more justification for the continuation of terrorism and fear. Yes, yes. The truth is Americans are suppressed from this particular trial and no real coverage will be provided that are many smart investigators and researchers that have brought forth compelling evidence that 9-11 did not play out as we are originally told, all to, all originally told. They, that they, meaning CNN, cannot cover the trial that lied because it will end up being picked apart by real journalists and they would become a laughing stock. Therefore, it is safer to stick with Hollywood actors and their drama trials. There is more as we can follow the next phase in the Hollywood court acting trials and trickery with our court systems to change the rules to include terrorism within civilian courts and the hijack system, all in the name of safety for the nation, of course. And they have a few more links on here related to this title. I have to agree with Miss Sledge because it's so funny when they try to use Bin Laden involved in 9-11. The FBI never had enough evidence to prosecute. 
even if you go to the past archives of the photo of, of Osama bin Laden want it it was never mentioned one time on the events of 9-11 on the World Trade Center nor the Pentagon think about that you can probably look it up I recommend that to back up my claim back up my view I believe Mr. Gahaith can be is a patsy or in other words a scapegoat and, and the fact is only heard it maybe a couple times how come the press isn't is true the, how come the mainstream news aren't jumping on this go think about it a lot of garbage in my view is in this case nothing authentic whatsoever he better really prove it back it up because a lot of us know what happened on September 11th is a lot more complex than what it is I call it a new world order agenda Others, other ones would be more blunt by saying an inside job well that still word is not mine and so on the other hand pay attention to this case best thing to do might do a little homework if you, if you can um Take the initiative. If you got any information, send it to me. And um, we'll see if I'll see if I go a little further on this, okay? Well, that's just my view. I see it a farce as well. And so the next thing I'm going to re be reading is from Anywar.com, which was released today, March 13th, by Norman Solomon. It's entitled The Fine Skin Syndrome Fourth Amendment for Me. But not the, no, for not thee. Who knows? Soon we might see headlines and the cable TV showing is asking Diane Feinstein a whistleblower or a traitor. Truthful answer to that question could not possibly be a whistleblower. It may already be a historic fact that Senator Feinstein's speech on March 11, 2014, blew a whistle on CIA surveillance of the Senate Intelligence Committee, which she chairs. But if that makes her a whistleblower, then Colonel Sanders is a vegetarian evangelist. In her blockbuster Tuesday speech on the Senate floor, Feinstein charged that the CIA intrusions on her committee's computers quite possibly violate the Fourth Amendment. You know that that's the precious amendment that Feinstein, more than any other senator, has powerfully treated, treated like dirt, worthy only of sweeping under the congressional rug. The tidy defender of the NSA's warning program, Feinstein went on the attacks against Edwin Snowden from the outset of his revelation last June. Within days, she denounced his brave whistleblowing as an act of treason. <laughs> as position she has maintained. Oh, really? She's a true patriot, a true maverick. Okay, go to the toilet, please. I'll flush it down. The remnants. Snowden and other Genuine whistleblowers actually take risk uh, to defend the civil liberties and human rights of others, including the most vulnerable among us. Real whistleblowers choose to expose serious wrongdoing, and if applicable, they renounce their own past complicity in doing the, those wrongs. Diane Feinstein remains in a different place. She's 180 degrees from a whistleblower orientation, but her moral compass is magnetized with Solipism as a less leading guardian of the surveillance state. This week, Feinstein stepped toward her tweak, her tap dance, insisting that intrusive surveillance, excuse me, so vile when directed at her colleague with August satire, must only be directed by others. A huge problem that is for the USA's top movers and shakers and media politics. Nothing rises to the level of constitutional crisis unless their noble oxen start to get gore. It doesn't seem to dawn on, unlike the Senator Feinstein, that Fourth Amendment protections for the few are not Fourth Amendment protections at all. More than 40 years ago, under the Nixon administration, the United States government was breaking into offices of the Socialist Workers Party, busting into the homes of members of the Black Panther Party, in the middle of the night with guns firing and wildly shredding the civil liberties of anti-war activists. Few among ruling elites seem to give a damn. 
But when the news emerged that one of the two big political parties has severely transgressed,